Two? Can you hear me? Okay, great. All right, we only have a short, time, a short amount of time, and we have to hurry up through this whole thing. It's about advanced HBase design and uh, HBase schema design. Um, about me, quickly, I'm a solution architect with Cloudera. I do this for a living. I'm allowed to work on um, Weir and uh, HBase in my spare time as much as, as possible. Um, and I'm going to customers and help them come to terms with Hadoop and HBase and set up systems. So that's basically what I do for a living. And um, I work with uh, Hadoop uh, with HBase since 2007, so um, a bit of like history there. And uh, I also wrote the the HBase book. Quick uh, overview: uh, we have an like, agenda in 15 minutes. Um, quick over overview of what HBase is, then uh, schema design, what that means. So we can't really go into much detail, but I hope I give you like an, at least an overview and um, some examples, and then we wrap up. And, I'll be out of here. So let's have a quick look at what HBase is. From a logical standpoint, for starters, if you want to know, have I heard about HBase? I know there was a raise of hands before, and, um, and there's a lot of people that nowadays know about HBase. But from an outset, if you look at it, HBase is just like a spreadsheet. So I use this spreadsheet analogy now quite, quite uh, a lot to just explain what HBase means. Like it's, it's a table, right? You have uh, columns and you have, you have uh, rows. Um, like it looks like Excel, but oh, the same as Excel, or not but you can actually enter some values into each of these cells. So that's straightforward, as you as you know from any spreadsheet. That's fine. The difference here is that instead of writing something into into a cell like in a spreadsheet and then deleting it when you override it with a new value in HBase, there is a component that tracks versions of something that you add. So look at it this way. So we have these values. There's, uh, here's column A, and there's row, uh, row 3. And we typed in A3 once, so there's a, a V1. That's like the first version of the cell. Over here, we typed in uh, B3, which is the third ver value that we typed into the cell. So we changed it twice already. So we typed in something initially, say B1, then B3, uh, B2, and then B3 is the last value. So it just tells us. When you look at this row, that's what the row currently is. That's similar to what you also find in a database, what you find in spreadsheets. That's a normal logical model of a table, rows, and in a row you have values, and these values you can replace, but otherwise they're just there. The last thing you have to put into the cell is what is it, what's uh, available. But here now in HBase, think of this whole thing as having drop-down boxes. So you have these drop-down boxes next to each of these values. And if you click on these drop-down boxes, you can actually see what happened there. So you get a history of the values in every cell. For example, here you can see, oh, we typed in B3 three times. It's not really clever, but you can just uh, see what has been typed in. So there's three versions that have been typed in. And you can open it up or not. You can leave this closed and see what is current. Or you can open it up and get everything. And that's actually what the API of HBase does. You can actually ask for, give me the current row, which gives you the latest version of every cell in that row. Or you can say, give me every value in that row that happened over time. Go back three versions, go, go back 10 versions, go back all of the versions that ever existed. So you can get a time history of every cell, of every, uh, uh, of every value in these columns. These ones here are actually called cells. So this is a cell. This is a cell, and this is a cell. These cells are re represented within the code base as what is called a key value. So a key value means they have a key and a value, while the, the value is currently what you see here. And the key also contains the version and a few other things. But that's basically uh, how HBase logically works. In reality, it's slightly different, though. It's that in HBase, you have a, in for schema design, you have the opportunity to divide columns into what is called column families. These are like uh, divisions here, um, vertically, that um, you can divide saying A and B belongs to column, column family A, A1, and the rest to column family 2. So there's, there's some sort of grouping going on here. And on the other side, the rows are horizontally chopped into what is called a region. This is for scalability. So there's a region 1, and that has these three rows. In practice, obviously, there won't be three rows, it's typically hundreds of thousands or millions of rows, but um, some number of rows and another number of rows in region two and so on and so forth. So that's sort of a logical add-on to the spreadsheet idea. 
A few more notes on this, uh, to this model, because that's important for how HBase works. You notice, like in Excel, these rows are sorted. One, two, three, four, five, ascending sorted. It's slightly different in HBase. In HBase, you can give any of these rows a, a basically arbitrary binary uh, key, like a row key. And that row key can be any number of bytes, it's just a byte array. And it's sorting automatically what is called lexicographical order. It's sorted in lexicographical order. It means it just compares byte by byte. And if it finds a byte larger of one key, that, or one byte that is larger of the previous key, it goes after the first one. So it just sorts them byte by byte from left to right. So it's not one, two, three, four, five. You can have row one, row two, and so on and so forth. So this one here, you can name any way you like. If you insert, if you store row one, row two, then row seven, and later on you decide to row five, it gets sorted automatically in between. So the system always keeps these rows sorted by your key that you define. That's part of the schema design, is the row key. The other part here is basically that, uh, that you have to note is that these column names, A, B, and C, like in Excel, also is variable. That's something we can look at in a minute as well. Right, so physically though, that's different. Physically, HBase chops them up and stores them as, and that's why big table, I guess, calls them tablet servers, as tablets. You can see this, like a little snapshot, a little sort of uh, cut-out section of this logical model. And these are stored separately. So this is stored in a directory separately, this and this and this and this and so on and so forth. So it rips this apart by column family as a separation and by uh, region on, on, the, on the row level. Uh, that's for, as I said, for scalability. So the physical model is this HBase tables and regions. So we have, any, uh, have a table, we have many tables, so you can create as many as you like. Tables are made up out of a number of regions. Regions have a specific start and end uh, key. We saw there before it was like one, two, and three, four, four five, and six, and so on, so forth. So there's a continuous, uh, continuous uh, number of row keys, and you know basically where the next one starts. And so knows the system. So if you insert something into a uh, into, the, into a table, it knows which region to address by this sorted uh, row key. And um, these regions live on different nodes and are stored in different places on HDFS. So don't worry about this. That's then done by the storage layer. This looks like this. You have the distribution here. Um, you can see here is the logical view of that table. We have A, B, C, D, E, and so on so, so forth. These are the row keys. Then we, these are distributed as sets, as regions, on region servers. So you can see they're randomly distributed. There's A to C, C to F, and so on and so forth. So that's the, the separation. That's how things grow. But you need to know this uh, because it's important. For schema design, you have to make this decision, and we heard this from Nicholas' talk uh, earlier, if you were here for, the, for that talk. Um, you can use column families to logically separate columns into groups that you need during query time. So either query time or uh, for, certain, um, for certain properties that you can set on a column family. For example, bloom filters, for example, compression, and so on and so forth. So if you have a column fam some columns that compress quite well, and you, uh, you, you want uh, to take advantage of that, you can put them in one column family and compress this, co this entire column family with uh, for the different um, compression formats. Or if you have a, a lots of small data that doesn't compress, or large data, which is JPEG, uh, and it's already uh, compressed, and you don't want to have this, you can have this in a separate column family and switch off compression there, for example. Or you want to do at query time, you want to look at the specific columns um, at uh, only. So if you have, uh, have 10 uh, columns, for example, and you typically need five at one time and five at the other time, you can separate them so that at query time you can take advantage of that because physically they're stored in separate files. As you saw with these, uh, with these um, separation, this Excel spreadsheet, which I ripped apart, so if you have something that is big and you want to scan this, this takes time because if you scan something and you look at every value and you go through the entire table, this might take some time. But if you have a column family as well in the same uh, table that it has, is very small, think of it one column family for an email message and one column family for the read flag. Like, it's basically, have I read this or not? Then typically you want to get all of the read email messages and if you were to scan the entire row, that might be slow, but if you can scan the one that says, give me all of the rows that are, the, that are read, and then you pull out the, the email message, it's much faster. So you can use this to, uh, to speed up uh, the performance. 
this is basically my attempt to explain how uh, HBase actually stores it. That's the logical model again. These are the versions. In reality, if you follow this, you don't have to do this right now. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit much. The point is, it stores really every single cell that you saw earlier, every version, as a separate item, as a key value on disk. So this folds together as this in one directory. This folds together as one sorted list in this directory. So this looks like this. So every column that you store, every value that you store in HBase carries the entire information with it. The row key, the uh, column family, the column name, the version, and so, so forth. Which means also that if you have no value in a row, there is no row. The row actually physically is a, is a collection of column values. If you have no column value, no row. So you can't store an empty row key, for example. You would have at least store an empty byte. So this is what I call fold, fold, store, and shift. Uh, the idea is here that you have, uh, you can take advantage that uh, with the uh, entire set, um, you can take advantage of that nulls are free, because if you don't store anything in a column, there's no key value, nothing stored, so it's for free. You can have highly sparse tables in a schema. So if you, if you think about something where every single row has a different column name, a different column that you need, that you can do with HBase, because it doesn't matter. It just stores this combination of row key, column name, and the value, and that's it. On the other hand, because of uh, sort of the implementation details, try to keep also the row key and the column names uh, like short as possible. Like compression helps, but we're sort of working on compression on different levels in memory or on a disk. Uh, the current advice is don't create keys that are huge when you only store a small digit. So try to use, for example, IDs, because if they get repeated all the time, then you have a lot of overhead. So on disk, as I said, it's sort of uh, negated with uh, compression, but it has to be loaded into memory and so on and so forth. Keep this in mind. So the logical model is that we have tables which have rows, which are sorted by lexicographical order. Table schemas in, in HBase, the only thing that you have to define is the number of column families and the names of them. So you create a couple of column families. The rest is then dynamic. You can do at runtime, create columns as you, as you need them, as you like them. So that's basically um, all you have to do. Schema design sounds like I just create a table, create a column family by the criteria I mentioned earlier, and I'm done, which is typically not true, right? There's more to it. So column family, as a quick reminder, column family versus a column. I mentioned column family groups columns. What is a column? Columns are key values, actually, the values on disk. Um, so the advice, again, is a bit of a caution there. Keep the number of column families to a lower number, because uh, column families dilute some system resources that if you take too many into account, you're putting a lot of stress on the system that um, might not be advantageous. If you put a lot of um, load, a lot of data, a lot of uh, write ops or read ops onto the system, that with um, too many column families, the system is not ideal. So um, anything less than 10 is okay. If you, if you have to go more than 10, then I really would question the model because it doesn't seem to make sense. Um, so it's a separation between the, the data and the actual, like some data, heavy data columns and, and small ones. Um, interesting is that HBase has no, you remember this Excel spreadsheet, has no further sorting. So there's no further sorting in terms of uh, secondary indexes uh, and so on and so forth. So there's no help finding data but by the sorted row key. And you remember, you saw the columns, the columns are also sorted. So we can make use of the sorting um, in, in HBase. And I have a, I have an example of how. Um, key cardinality, uh, this basically shows you that if you go by row key, if you have the row key, you have the best performance in HBase. So if you have to decide where to put data in HBase, move it to the left into the row key. That's the key value here. If you, if you don't know what you need, basically, and you put it somewhere here to the left, you can later on access, access this uh, quicker. If you move it to the right, for example, here all the way to the right, into the value, then the performance is the worst because you have to go look at every single key value to find your data. So uh, keep in mind that for performance, you can move things to the left if you can, or basically you leave it at, at the right and then pay the penalty at read time. So the best performance you really is gained from the row key. Um, you can, should hint to the system um, time ranges if you can. When you do schema design is one thing, 
But on the other side, if you do query, uh, if you query that uh, table schema, make sure that you um, query the, the right uh, and give it the right time range uh, and hint to the system what you need, so it can actually reduce this. What goes back to what Nicholas had earlier with the different files on disk. Uh, there's a there's a spatial um, locality. If you can if you can tell the system I only need the last hour, it can skip some files in the system, so that helps. Same with Bloom filters and these things. Um, so. Key, de key and table design is crucial uh, to gain best performance. Um, what do you need? Uh, what do you need to know? I mean, the, always the question I hear is, why do I have to fiddle with this? Why do I have to think where I put data in HBase? The reason is that you have to do similar things with RDBMS as well. You have to understand why a, query, why a join is slow, why do I have to create a secondary index on a table? So here's the same thing. You need to know a few things, why, why, they, why they work that way. And you have, to work, you have to work your way through the physical model to understand why you have to design it in a certain way that at, query, uh, at read time, you get the best performance. It's just a sort of, it bubbles up, but that also happens at uh, relational databases. Because you have no secondary indexes, you have to use these row key sorting or the column name sorting, and you have to... Um, you can actually put multiple indexes into one uh, to generate uh, a combined uh, table. This is called, someone coined this term DDI, which is uh, denormalization, duplication, and intelligent keys. The idea is that you go away from the typical relational uh, idea and design data differently. So that's basically um, something you have, to, you have to keep in mind. You have to uh, think differently. And I have, a, I have a, an, like a model on this one. Hang on. So key design, I skipped this one. Um, so based on the access pattern, you have to decide uh, how, you, how you actually structure the keys. So there's, um, um, there's, there's the, the question, I told you you can move data to the right, uh, to the left, into the key, so that you have high, uh, high, um, a low cardinality, that you can find the data as fast as possible. The problem with that is that if you do that, you might end up uh, sending all of your requests to a certain region. And if that region is one region in the system, you're hitting one single server and you get performance problems. We heard this a couple of times today. Keep in mind that um, designing uh, the key is, is that you have to ask the question, do I need sequential or random keys? Sometimes you can have to combine both. You have to uh, create salting and subsections. So there's a, that goes into like, a lot of detail there. But um, key design is the question of, how do I say, what do I do at write time, and how do, I, how do I do at read time? Do I need to be really fast at read time? Then I take a penalty at write time, if I'm, if, or vice versa. Or sometimes you have to find the middle ground. Um, Prematerialize everything, so the idea is that um, instead of um, creating things or, or reading uh, at, uh, at query time, the typical approach in HBase is to um, uh, store the data already prematerialized so that you have a low number of reads. So you duplicate data in some, some events and um, you design basically for the reads. So the cache is basically one thing that helps you with the reads, but you have to make sure that um, data is, 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 um, is fast at read time. The relational model, this, I'm just closing this now, um, the relational model shows basically the difference. This is a relational model, typical thing, right? So this is what you would design with, a, with this, this uh, uh, mediation table here. So you have a band, a show, and a, and a set, the combination of both. Um, you could basically think about throw this all into one, like, like this. This is not a good idea because um, uh, a band has obviously many shows, so this doesn't work. So the idea is that you have to think differently in HBase. In HBase, when you, when you model, when you do the schema design, when you, when you think about how do I structure data within HBase, you have the liberty of using this, the, the columns that I mentioned earlier, which you can define on the fly to, to, to logically um, uh, represent entities within a single row. So you can have sub-entities in a row by just coming up uh, with uh, column names. And um, as you read the row, you can basically uh, read these column families, uh, sorry, these uh, sub-entities by um, a prefix, for example, in the, in the column name. You just make them up um, as you go. So you wonder how this, what it all means, right? It's all complicated. So here's a, here's a, like a the, the overview, like I have a table. You have a row key that you can construct with, uh, you can combine, you can nest, you can uh, create co um, compound keys. And you have columns where you can have nested entities, like you have a column here, nested entity here. And Nicholas mentioned this, there's also one where you can have a sub-nested one by time. This is the fourth dimension, this is the, the version di uh, dimension. So um, 
you don't normalize and put things together like you did in the, in the, in the past. Here you typically put things in one row and with sub-entities in the row. An example here is um, OpenTSDB, and we're at the end now. Um, this example shows that this is a row key where they have the metric ID. OpenTSDB is a time series database and saves um, metrics of a system, for example, CPU usage or disk usage. So they have a metric ID, which is the CPU usage, for example, a timestamp and text. So this is a, compo a compound key. The metric gives them a sorting. It, it bins the timestamp into metric IDs. So that's a good, is a good option to sort of combine them. And you can see how they name, uh, use the column names with a delta to this timestamp here as an offset. So this delta plus this timestamp is the actual time when this measure was taken, when this uh, value was determined. And they even use the name here with some flags. It's also quite interesting. Um, so that's basically uh, one example. And as I said, I can't go in much de more detail. Um, and summing this up, um, designed for either read, write, or both. Uh, avoid hotspotting by, by, by getting the wrong keys, sending all of, the, all of the messages to the same region server, or to the same region, and therefore same region server. Uh, consider IDs then, and, as opposed to full text. Use column families to separate files, basically, that you have um, better performance when you search or scan the table. Um, shift within each uh, key value, move moved, uh, information into the key, row key to have faster access, uh, use composite keys on the column qualifiers. And um, so the, the schema design in HBase is actually a combination of design and the keys, row and column, uh, segregation of data, choose compression and block size, bloom filters, and other att attributes. Um, and as I said, you still have to do this in other databases as well. So that's not really that special. Um, right. Sorry, just made it. Questions? One? Two questions? I propose to take questions offline. Okay, that's better. Time. If you have Lars. questions, you can see me. Great. Thank, Thank you, you. Lars.